Every decision that we make is engraving our character. And so character is built upon what? The small decisions. Every little time we chip away at that big stone to create a masterpiece or your decisions can create a disaster. And so we are to add character uh, to our faith. And can I, can I tell you, um, in our nation right now, I think it's safe to say we have a character crisis. Or you could even call it a pandemic. You got a pandemic of a lack of character. I mean, think about it in this nation. Up is down. And down is up. We, we celebrate criminals and we demonize saints. Good is labeled evil and evil is labeled good. We're living upside down and we have a national character crisis and produces a very confused nation confused people. So in the midst of the character crisis, what should we as the people of God look like in all the chaos? We should be people of character. People just like Daniel. Because what we're going to see is Daniel's character will actually change the trajectory of the entire nation. The entire nation will be changed because of one man's character. Now, character, we've got integrity. But do you know what character is built upon? The one trait. Now, because if you were to define character, integrity, honesty, loyalty, you know, we have all these things to define what character is. But do you know what all of those things are built upon? It's one character trait. Courage. It takes courage to do the right thing when you will suffer harm. It takes courage to do the right thing when everybody else is doing the wrong thing. So what is character built upon? Character is built upon the courage to do what is right simply because it's the right thing to do. And sometimes we can get a little confused, like whenever, I'll give you an example, I'll give you an example. Um, My birthday was um, Saturday or something like that. And so my my wife and the kids, they they threw me a little party when I got back from church in Oklahoma City, and we opened up gifts, and um, my my wife bought me a pair of shoes, but my little girl Eva was the one who picked them out, and um, so I opened up the shoes, and I was like, ah, these are awesome, and so, uh, and I was like, thank you, Eva, so much, and and then the party was over, and my wife goes, you can't wear those right now. (laughs) I was like, why? Why can't I wear the shoes? And she said, well, Uh, I just realized a few minutes ago uh, that we left the store without paying for the shoes because the cashier didn't ring up the shoes. Now, Now, some people could say, that's the blessing of God. It's his birthday, you know? I mean, no, no, no. You know what integrity does? Integrity walks back into the store and pays for the shoes. Because it's the right thing to do. But I'll, I kid you, people say, look at God blessing me. I'm blessed and highly favored. They didn't charge me for the shoes. No, you didn't pay for the shoes. And we want to be people of character. And can I tell you, when you go back in and you say, hey, I left without paying for the shoes, not my fault. And when you pay for the shoes that you didn't have to come back in, do you know what kind of impact that makes on the person who's standing on the other side? Because in their thinking, they're like, why did you come back? You know why you go back? Because it's the right thing to do. Integrity is doing the right thing even if you suffer because of it. Did Daniel suffer? 
for doing the right thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're, 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 we're about to see it. Daniel 6, verse 11. Then these men went as a group, and they found Daniel doing what Daniel always did, praying and asking God for help. So they went to the king, and they spoke to him about his royal decree. And they said, did you not publish a decree that during the next 30 days, anyone who prays to any god or human being except to you, your majesty, would be thrown into the lion's den? And the king answered, the decree stands in accordance with the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be repealed. Then the king, then they said to the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you, your majesty, or to the decree you put in writing. He still prays three times a day. But look at verse 14. When the king heard this, he was greatly distressed. Because what was he about to do? Make Daniel the prime minister of the country. He was greatly distressed. And look at this. He was determined to rescue Daniel. And he made every effort until sundown to save him. Meaning, what did he do? He tried to find loopholes within the laws. Now you're like, but he's the king. Can't the king do whatever the king wants to do? In an authoritative monarchy, yes. But is this form of government an authoritative monarchy? No. It's a constitutional monarchy. And so what is the king bound by? The laws of the Medes and the Persians. And so he tried to get him out. Then the men went as a group to King Darius and said to him, Remember your majesty that according to the law of the Medes and the Persians... No decree or edict that the king issues can be changed. So the king gave the order and they brought Daniel and they threw him into the lion's den. And the king said to Daniel, may your God, whom you serve continually, rescue you. You think Daniel had made an impression on this king? I mean... You're the king of an empire, and one person's going to get thrown into a lion's den. How much does the king care? Probably not very much. But what did this king try to do all night? Find a way to save Daniel. I, I think this king really cared for Daniel. And it would appear the king was mad at himself. Because what happened to him? He got played. He got played. And... He's bound by it, though. He's bound by it. And so he, he tries to find a way, and he says, you know, may the God that you serve continually, may he rescue you. Now, the next part of the story is what we call a miracle. But there are some people out there uh, that we call more liberal theologians. They tried to make up reasons as to why Daniel didn't die that wasn't supernatural. And so I'll tell you some of the reasons that some of these scholars try to give. They'll say when Daniel was um, dropped into the cave, uh, that he put himself in a crevice where the lions couldn't eat him. And I mean, that sounds okay, maybe, but how old was he? Man, I don't know if you drop an 83-year-old down into a pit, how quickly an 83-year-old is going to be able to find a crevice in the dark to hide from lions. That's just, you know, okay, that's one. Then the other, there's, there's two other opinions they have. The other one is, is ridiculous. They say, they say that Daniel got dropped in the lion's den, and the lions weren't hungry. Kid you not, some theologians, that's what they say happened, that Daniel got dropped. Does anybody have a pet animal? Is there ever a moment when the pet animal is not hungry? How much more wild lions? So I don't, I don't think that's plausible. And then the third one is um, they dropped Daniel in the lion's den and 
They dropped him in a place where when he fell in, he got covered in straw. And so the lions, these are, these are actual uh, thoughts and theories. And man, I tell you what, <laughs> if I was in a, in a place, you know, like a, a room and, and somebody threw a stake in the room, I'm pretty sure I would find the stake. So to think that these lions just missed Daniel all night long, I can't buy any of those three theories. The theory that I buy is the only one that makes sense. That a big, big God showed up in a big, big way. And that God supernaturally closed the mouth of these lions. We'll read it. Verse 17, it says, A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles so that Daniel's situation might not be changed. Then the king returned to his palace and he spent the night without eating and without any entertainment being brought to him. And he couldn't sleep. So did this matter? Did this bother the king? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. This, he, he knew he got played. And at the first light of dawn, which means Early in the morning, you know what the king did? He got up and he hurried to the lion's den, which tells me this king must have heard some stories about the God of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because what was his departing words to Daniel? May the God that you serve continually, may he rescue you. And... At the crack of dawn, what does the king do? He runs to see, has this God that I've heard about done in the now what I've heard he's done in the past? And when he came near the den, the king called to Daniel in an anguished voice, Daniel, Servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to rescue you from the lions? And Daniel answered, May the king live forever. My God sent his angel. Same angel that showed up when another king threw Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego in a fiery furnace. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me. Kind of like how those three Hebrew boys, they were not hurt by the fire. They didn't even smell like the fire. Because what God has done, he can also do it again. Because I was found innocent in his sight. Nor have I ever done any wrong before you, your majesty. The king was overjoyed. And he gave orders to lift Daniel out of the den. And when Daniel was lifted from the den, no wound was found on him. Because he had trusted in God. At the king's command, the men who had falsely accused Daniel were brought in and thrown into the lion's den. Now, supposedly, these lions weren't very hungry. <laughs> Along with their wives and children. You say, why is that the case? Because in the Medo-Persian form of government, uh, when a government official committed some act of treason, uh, the whole family uh, was put to death. And so... The wives and the children get thrown in. And look at this. Before they reached the floor of the den, before they could get to the hay and the straw that Daniel hid under, the lions overpowered them and crushed all their bones. Then King Darius wrote to all the nations and the people of every language in the earth, may you prosper greatly. I issue a decree that in every part of my kingdom... 
People must fear and reverence the God of Daniel. Amen. For he is the living God. And he endures forever. His kingdom will not be destroyed. His dominion will never end. He rescues and he's... This guy sounds like a preacher. He rescues and he saves. He performs signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. And so Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. Amen. What a mighty God we serve. And the amazing part, and God just has a knack for doing this, what the enemy means to destroy God's people with is the very thing <laughs> that God uses to destroy the enemies of the people of God. All throughout scripture, all throughout scripture, Haman built some gallows to hang Mordecai. And those were the very gallows that Haman hung from until his feet quit kicking. Can I tell you, sometimes it looks like the enemy has won. Because in the case of Daniel here, did God spare Daniel from the lion's den? No. I mean, Daniel actually, I mean, just think about that for a moment. Daniel actually got thrown into the lion's den. God didn't spare him from that. But God spared him from the mouths of those lions. And Daniel did the right thing and he suffered for it. He did suffer for it. Yet, ultimately, Daniel was rewarded for his character and his integrity. And so my challenge to our church family is that there will come times in life, they can be big, they can be small, where our character is tested. And sometimes we can justify in our minds doing the wrong thing so the right thing happens to us. Because it's, it's hard to know that if you do the right thing, the wrong thing's going to happen to you. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, God rewards those who faithfully seek and live after him. Now, does that mean that it prevents all people from attacking us? No, not at all. But at the end, what was it that changed the trajectory of this nation? It wasn't Daniel's lack of character. It was Daniel's courage to be a person of character. And could it be that in our day today, maybe our nation is waiting on a few Daniels to be people of character and maybe they go through the lion's den, but they come out of the lion's den and then all of a sudden, what is the response? Look at what the Lord has done because people are watching. I'm just telling you, people are watching us. There's a story of this preacher who went across town to preach on a Sunday and that's where I'll close because I've run out of time. But this, this preacher, he, he preached his sermon and it was time to, to go back. And so um, he, he got on the bus and um, he gave the bus driver his change and he got some change back. He went and sat down. And that preacher had preached a, a sermon uh, about the Ten Commandments. And, you know, he was a fire and brimstone preacher. And so <clears throat> it's time to get off the bus. And um, before he got off, he realized that the bus driver had actually uh, given him uh, back too much change. And so as he's getting off the bus, he went up to the bus driver and he said, Sir, uh, I just wanted to let you know, you actually gave me too much change. Here, here's the amount that you gave me that was more. And the bus driver says, Oh, I know I did. And the preacher is like, Hang on, what? Why did you give me back too much change? And, and the bus driver said, uh, That church that you preached at earlier today, I was there. And I really liked the part where you were preaching about thou shalt not steal. 
And I just wanted to see. If you practice what you preach. And so you never know who's watching. Even the 10 cents. You know, God's really, really moving in your life when a paper clip bothers your conscience. So may we be people of character. May we be people of integrity. May we be people like Daniel who have the courage to do the right thing, not because the reward will be the right thing. May we be people who do the right thing simply because it's the right thing to do. Everybody loves people of character. There's not a person in this room who wants to be married to a liar. There's not a person in this room that wants to do business with a crook. Every person loves people of character. Let's make sure we are people of character. So with that, will you stand to your feet? I ran out of time in our hour of power. And so next week, we'll go to chapter 7 and we'll take a look into the future and see what Daniel saw some couple thousand years ago. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your word that instructs us, your word that guides us, your word that shows us the way that we should be people just like Daniel, people who have holy habits, that do the basics consistently well, people who have added to their faith character, people who have added to their faith self-control, people who have added integrity and courage. God, that's, that's who we want to be. We want to be people that represent you well to the world around us because, Lord, we do know people are watching us. And may we be a reflection of you that draws people to you, not just because of the words that come out of our mouths. May we may say the right stuff. Lord, help us to do the right stuff. Help us to put your word into action that we may preach the gospel everywhere we go, not with the words of our mouths, but the actions that we do. May we be people like you. And we pray it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And everybody in agreement said, amen, amen. All right, did you get something out of that tonight? Daniel 6, the lion's den. All right, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Oh, we're going to have a blast. We're going to be talking about Peter's shadow. And uh, Peter's shadow, the people, they just wanted to, to just have a shadow. Uh, walk by them. And so that's what we'll be talking about on Sunday. And then the following Sunday, we got a special guest. Uh, Daryl Strawberry will be with us to preach and a great baseball player, even better preacher of the gospel. So with that, let's go and let's grow in Jesus name. You are dismissed. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday at 10 o'clock.